So one of my dream guitars has always been a Fender Competition Mustang. The most famous one is probably the one that Kurt Cobain used during the Nevermind era. His was this dark Lake Placid blue, but my favorite color is orange, and the orange version just so happens to be the rarest and most expensive version. Even an import reissue will set you back like five or six thousand dollars. It seemed to be a guitar I would just never really get to own. Until, around the time of my birthday, Chicago Music Exchange announced they would be making Squire competition Mustangs. So I did end up purchasing one as a little birthday gift to myself, but I do plan on heavily modifying it. I've never really heavily modified a guitar before, and I just think this is the perfect opportunity to learn how to and learn how to solder. There's some guy in my house right now, I don't know who he is, but he seems pretty chill. And let's get this thing open. And the Capri Orange looks gorgeous right outside of the box. I do want to add some black pickup covers, just like the original, and some white tuning pegs I think would be the icing on the cake. And for really no reason at all, here it is next to my buddy's um, Squire Cyclone in Candy Apple Red. They look pretty sweet together. It is a more affordable guitar, so there were some corners cut, it's not perfect. It's a little messy around the nut. Uh, but most notably, there was this nasty little ding in the middle of the competition stripe. That was pretty disappointing to see. You know, it doesn't really affect the playability at all or anything, but kind of sucks. Um, and also, there was like glue seeping out from under some of the frets. Uh, it's not in just this one spot. It really was like all over the fretboard. There's just like these little chunks of glue seeping out and stuck onto the fretboard. So, yeah, that was pretty nasty. Um, I ended up getting an, an X-Acto knife and kind of cutting it off to safely remove it. And here it is after I've polished the frets and removed all that gunk. Looks pretty nice now. And now on to replacing the tuners, uh, replacing the pickups, replacing the pots, and also adding some extra shielding where the pickups go. So yeah, here we go. So in total, I spent just under 200 bucks on upgrades for this thing. Um, I got these cool locking Goto vintage tuners. Uh, they just dropped right in, really easy to install. I also got this output jack. It's got more points of contact than a regular one, so a lot more reliable. Um, I got some full-size fender pots because the pots that came in this thing were like mini, 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 mini pots. They were tiny. I also got a set of these Strat Tex-Mex pickups to put in. Uh, I wanted something a little more high output than what were already on this guitar, and they're pretty affordable. So yeah, here's some here's some footage of me putting those tuners in. Um, took about 20 minutes, I want to say. Um, here's me cleaning the fretboard and, you know, working my way in, doing all that. I don't know why it turned portrait here. I, it's really annoying. I, I kept trying to make this landscape because the rest of this video is landscape, but... And here is me adding some shielding tape on the inside. I, I am aware that there was already shielding paint already, like, all over the inside, so this is kind of pointless. But let me cook, you know? Just, just let me cook. Um, putting putting that stuff back in and yada yada and here is me installing the new pots the new output jack and putting in those Tex-Mex pickups Unfortunately, I did not get a sound demo of what the guitar sounded like before I installed all of this so Can't do a comparison. I I meant to do that and I just completely forgot but uh, yeah, here's how it sounds now. So I'm doing these sound demos with a Fender Tone Master Deluxe Reverb. Uh, the mic is a Sennheiser E906, and that microphone is going into a Volt 276 interface and right into my phone. Here we go. <laughs>
So yeah, that's my experience with the Squire Classic Vibe Competition Mustang. I got this through a Chicago Music Exchange and they are a Chicago Music Exchange exclusive. There's also a blue version that I saw on there. If you wanted to get one yourself, you would have to get it like right now because these are pretty limited edition. They've sold out I think twice now. I don't know if they're ever going to restock, but if you wanted to get one, right now's the time. I'm not affiliated by them in any way, by the way. I'm not sponsored. I, I wish I was. I wish I got this for free, but I paid for this with my own money and I paid for all of the upgrades with my own money. And about the upgrades, I wouldn't say that the upgrades that I made are like absolutely essential to making this a playable instrument. If you got it stock right out of the box and just put a good setup on it, then that's really all you actually need. The frets did come pretty scratchy and some of them, some of the fret ends were a little sharp. But once you get that taken care of, this is a perfectly giggable instrument. The pickups that originally came on this guitar were pretty low output, which is pretty normal for a lot of vintage voiced pickups. Um, I prefer something a little more modern, um, something a little more higher output, so that's why I put the Tex-Mex pickups in. And then I changed the pots and the output jack just to get the best sound that I could possibly get out of them. Um, the output jack, the original output jack that came with it, I had some problems with it. I had to bend it a couple times to get it to really catch, so that's why I ended up replacing that too. The tuners that I got for are these Goto tuners. They're locking and they have the white tips on them, which I thought looked really cool and a lot closer to the original competition Mustangs that were out there. Um, the big question that these sort of mid-range, mid-price range guitars always get is, you know, are they just as good as Fender brand stuff? Are they even better than Fender brand stuff? And the short answer that I can give is yes. And of course, it just depends on what you want to get out of the instrument. If we're going to look at what Fender guitars are being produced, newly produced, like right now that you can buy at actual like guitar stores, brand new, what's being in production right now, the cheapest Fender brand Mustang is going to be the Player Series Mustang. And the thing about those is they have a three-way toggle switch um, which is a lot more convenient if you're playing live, um, a lot more convenient than these, but it also gets rid of the out of phase sound option, and they're also all hardtails. I prefer having a whammy bar on my guitars, and you know, even though I don't use it like 100, 100% of the time, I just prefer having that option, and you know, even if technically there's some tuning instability that comes with it, I don't mind tuning my guitar. Um, and I really like the vibrato system that comes on these. I really wish the Player Series Mustangs had some sort of vibrato system. The cheapest Fender Mustang on the market right now that you can get with a vibrato system is the Ventera Mustang. And the thing about those is the only fretboard option is the Pau Ferro fretboards. Um, a lot of people don't like those because of how they look. They look very dull and faded and light. I personally feel pretty indifferent towards them. Um, I do have another guitar with a Pau Ferro fretboard that I ended up darkening, and I don't know. I, I don't think they look horrible. Um, I can kind of get by with them, but a lot of people don't like them, so that's something to keep in mind. And with those, they have a seven and a quarter inch radius um, on the fretboard, which is a lot more period accurate, but I prefer 9.5 inch radius and I would say most people, most modern players would prefer the 9.5 inch radius that comes on these and the Player Series Mustangs, so there's that. There's that to think of. There's also the Fender American Performer Mustang and I have owned two of those before and they, they play great, they feel great to play in your hands. The neck has like this nice satin finish, the body's like fully satin. The vibrato system feels great to play, stays in tune. It's a really great playing guitar, but I just hated the pickups that they came with. They were so noisy if you added even like the smallest bit of overdrive and distortion of them, which is really annoying because I play rock music. The first one, I actually, it led me to believe that it had grounding issues, which it didn't. So I ended up returning it and getting it exchanged for another identical one. And I ended up having the same exact problems. I took it to my nearest like official Fender dealer at Lightning Joe's. He, t he looked at it and checked everything. The grounding was 
completely fine and the pickups were working as intended. They just, those Yosemite pickups just didn't take overdrive or distortion very well without a bunch of hum. They, they like sounded good with the distortion, but there was just so much hum with it that it was kind of unplayable. So with this Mustang, um, I will add that with the stock pickups that came with uh, this Mustang, it, they sounded great with distortion and overdrive and there wasn't like a crazy amount of hum not more than you normally get with single coils. So, I don't know, in my opinion, I would say if you are on a budget, if you want a Mustang, or just if you want a Mustang in general, I would just pick up a Classic Vibe Mustang. Especially if you know how to set up guitars already, as long as you got a good setup on this thing, this is gonna be a great guitar. And I think that's really all I have to say about it. Um, if anything, this guitar is a surf guitar, I think, the best tones that I can get out of this are surfy, kind of clean tones with spring reverb. That sounds the best to my ear, but of course that's very subjective. And yeah, I don't really have much else to say about it. I love this guitar, especially after all the upgrades that I've made, and I think it's a great value. Not sponsored by anyone, by the way. Um, I wish I could get stuff for free, but unfortunately I don't. I paid for everything all out of my own pocket. Speaking of the price, the price that I paid for this guitar plus all of the upgrades that I got for it, that total price was still less than the cheapest Fender brand Mustang that you can buy. That was still cheaper than a Player Series Mustang. So keep that in mind. And with that, I think I'll end the video. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope that this was entertaining and maybe even informative to you. Um, I don't really upload very often, but when I do, I have a lot of fun with it. Um, I'm starting to really like making guitar videos. I do have a couple more um, guitar videos that I plan on making in the future. I've got a couple pedals that I plan on reviewing, and I also have another um, project guitar that I intend on making a video on. And this time I will remember to get a recording of how the old pickups sound compared to the new ones. So keep an eye out for that if you are subscribed. So thank you for watching.